Hello, it's Caleb Parkin here. As in the last two videos, which hopefully you've watched, no worries if not, I am a poet interested in working with visual art, so paintings, things like that, and how it can inspire our writing. This is the third and final video workshop about using visual art to inspire our creative writing, especially using Bristol Museum and Art Gallery's online selection on Art UK or any other online gallery as well. And especially while we're writing at home, so you can do this anywhere. You can pause me whenever you need to, if you want to write for longer, if you'd like to take a break or to stroke the dog, cat, chinchilla, whatever you've got around, that's fine. Pause me when you need to. These activities are part of our Max Literacy Award project. For today, you will need a pen, paper, or whatever you write with, which might be a phone or a tablet or a computer is fine. The website address to Art UK and Bristol Museum and Art Gallery's selection, which we will put in the information below. And today we are going to talk about, well, talking pictures I've called today. The first activity will be a paint chart poem. Then we'll have a go at a peculiar perspective piece of writing. And the last bit will be talking at gallery, where I talk to you about performing your poems and maybe making a talking gallery at home. I'm gonna to go to the Zoomosphere now so I can explain the next two activities and show you some pictures. So I'll see you there. Okay, we're back in the Zoomosphere. Here I am, and you will notice that my background is a bit different. The first activity I'm gonna invite you to do is create a paint chart poem. So on this paint chart behind me, there are various colors. We've got uh, mouse's back. We've got, I can't even say that word, porphyria pink. We've got ointment pink. We've got arsenic, which is a type of po poison. And my favourite, I think, is Terre d'Egypte, which means Egyptian Earth. So whenever a company like a DIY company that we might buy paint from um, develops these paint ranges, then they come up with names for all the colours. What I'm going to invite you to do is to go onto the Bristol Museum and Art Gallery uh, Art UK site and scroll through and find a painting or an artwork that you really love the colours in. So let's go and have a look for one now. So you go onto the main site here and just start scrolling through until you find an image, the colours you really love. OK, you can pause me now if you need to. So go and find your image that has amazing colours. If you've paused me and then you're back, then I'm going to show you the image that I found and really loved uh, for its colours. This is Stage Lights by Nazarino Camilleri. And I thought it was beautiful and um, really bright, bold colours and perhaps this image of a performer or dancer. And so I've made a paint chart poem where I've looked very closely at the colours and then I've given them names. So here it is, paint chart for Stage Lights by Nazarino Camilleri. Through the curtains yellow, green gleam, ploughed field, where sea meets sky, two day old snow, fresh cartridge black, rotten raspberry. And if you want, and you'd like an extra challenge, you could try and make the colors relate to the theme of the picture. So for me, it was inspired by dance and movement. So we've got jaunty juniper, pirouette pink and on point grey. So I tried to make them about dancing and moving. So that's the invitation to have a go at creating your own paint chart poem. And perhaps you can go to Wilkinson's or you can go to Farrow and Ball and you can say, listen, I've got all these paint names and maybe they'll want to take them from you. Who knows? So I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll be back in a second to introduce the next activity inspired by artworks.
Okay, I've brought myself back to the virtual Bristol Museum and Art Gallery behind me here. Here it is. Here's the, here's the entrance door just over here. My hands disappearing. Um, the next activity is going to be a peculiar perspective poem. We're going to have another look on the Art UK uh, pictures online and then pay close attention to details. So look for an artwork where there's quite a lot going on, maybe where there's a situation or a scene with various figures in it, people, animals, objects, whatever you like, but with, with lots going on, okay? It could even be an abstract if you want, so not, not something that's supposed to look real. So keep looking over that picture until you find an overlooked detail, perhaps an object, something in a corner, maybe something you hadn't noticed before. And that can again be a person or an animal, or even a colour or a thing, that's all completely fine as well. So I'm going to show you the picture that I worked with for my piece. Here we go. Here's an image I found and was kind of intrigued by because it's this um, tea room or something where lots is going on in terms of all the stuff that's there, but there's no people, it's kind of empty. Once you've had a look, I'd like you to choose your overlook detail and then use these sentence stems, which we'll put in the information underneath. I can see, I can hear, I can feel, I can taste, I can smell, and then I like and I don't like. And you're going to write those as if you are the thing in that artwork, okay? So I've written one as well. And my one goes like this. And then perhaps you could use these as riddles. And um, the poet Rebecca Tantoni suggested this to me as a riddle game. Um, and it's really fun if you're with someone, you can both find something and then be a different thing in that artwork. So here's mine for perspective sketch of the Salon at Rest House. I can see the ornate ceiling, all those engraved panels. I can hear the rustle of my fronds Fronds, it's a nice word, isn't it? I can feel the breeze through the doorway, the strange soil I've been placed in. I can taste the sunlight through the slanted windows above. I can smell fancy perfumes as tea drinkers enter. I like my elaborate gold pot. I don't like the elephant stand I'm on, how much all of this costs. So I was being, you've probably guessed it, one of those palm trees that's in the gold pots in this picture. And this is a really good way of getting us to notice details in a painting. So I hope you have a lot of fun doing it and you find something really interesting that you might not have noticed in a picture before. Okay, I hope you enjoyed creating your paint chart poem and your peculiar perspective poem as well. I'd like to leave you with some ideas about performing, about reading your work out loud. I always read my poems out loud to check that they're working and it really, really helps. And if there's someone else around you might like to read poems to, that can be brilliant practice. If you made a frame around uh, you can hold that around yourself and perform your poem. And here are my top tips for reading your work out loud. The first one is slow down, halve your speed. I have to remind myself to do this because otherwise I speak too quickly. So slow right down. Stand up. Try standing up to read your poems and give your voice some space. So imagine there's a thread going through the top of your head and pulling you up so your voice has loads of space. So slow down, stand up nicely. And the third one is to add music. So try different ways of saying it, like I did with my voice then. Um, otherwise we can end up speaking all like this in one, the same way. So if you add some music, your voice goes up and down a bit, that can really help. You can try it as if it's a speech, that you're the president of the USA giving a speech, or perhaps that it's like gossip or a secret. So try out different ways of reading your poem.
that's it. That's it from me. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed writing um, and keep looking for artwork to write about. And when you go to a gallery and museum next time, when we can, then take your notebook and see if any of these inspire you to have another go at writing a poem inspired by artwork. Thanks very much. Bye.